1966, I was 22 years old and I was uh, working for uh, Arkansas Power and Light Company climbing high line poles uh, for the construction group all over the state of Arkansas. So a lot of times uh, I was on the road every week and during that time I had a wife, I had a car payment even. I had a uh, two daughters and a house in Sheridan, Arkansas. And uh, one of my daughters, my youngest daughter, Alicia, uh, at that time got spinal meningitis and it was meningococcus spinal meningitis, which was rare to get, but it's a killer. It was time for me to get off the road and my wife at the time said that she needed help with these girls because she had, they had been sick. So as I grew up over there, my folks owned the mercantile store in Prattsville, Arkansas, which is eight miles from Sheridan. So I had been back and forth to the bank many times making deposits and things of that nature. And the bank belonged to the McCoy family. and. In, and in, uh, I was in there one day and, you know, as, as any little country town, uh, everybody knew the, my business before I even knew it. So uh, Eddie McCoy uh, was one of the McCoys that was the CEO of the bank. And he came up to me and I was standing at a teller window and he said, Eddie, what are you going to do now? And I said, for what? And he said, to what, what you going to work, where are you going to go to work? And I said, oh, I don't have anything. And he said, why don't you go to work for the bank? And I said, okay, what will I do? I'm not a banker. And he said, well, we're going to teach you that. So I went to work for the Grant County Bank at that time. And I started at the very bottom. I mean, uh, I didn't sweep the floors, but I, they showed me where the broom closet was. I can tell you that. And so uh, there, there was an older gentleman there named Coates A. Mitchell, and he was the old way of banking. I mean, you, you made, didn't document it and you did everything right, or you didn't do it at all for Coates A. Mitchell. And he did not mind telling you that. So I started out working for Coates A. Mitchell as, and then uh, another man was there at that time that came from the FDIC and he was a younger person by age and his name was Bodie Boatwright. And so Bodie Boatwright was what I considered the guy that taught me banking. Cote Mitchell taught me the old style of banking. I'd only been there, oh, probably maybe three months and I got promoted to operations officer of the bank. And you think, how in the world could that be? Well, I thought the same thing. Uh, but since I was one of only six, it didn't make any difference. There was only six employees and everybody had several jobs. And we uh, failed to mention, uh, we were four and a half million dollars in total assets. I'd been at the bank uh, for two years and had learned uh, what I felt like was a great education in uh, banking. Uh, and I was, uh, again, as I mentioned, operations officer of the bank. And one morning, uh, Eddie McCoy brought uh, into the bank a newspaper from uh, the Gazette, and it had a full page ad where IBM had put an ad in the paper and it said, IBM introduces a new small computer geared for small businesses. Uh, kind of sideline, I think Eddie McCoy thought, well, we're small enough to look at one. So uh, he brought that paper to me and he said, asked me what I thought about it. And I said, Eddie, I don't know anything about a computer, but what would you like? And he said, I want you to look into this, okay? I said, fine. So I called at uh, Little Rock. Uh, in Little Rock, I called for IBM's number and I got it. And that was, uh, they had an office out on uh, Scott Hamilton Drive here in Little Rock. And I talked to somebody up there and they said, well, uh, you're fortunate enough that uh, tomorrow, 
b believe it or not, tomorrow we're having a, a meeting and introducing the Systems 3 Model 10 to the Little Rock public and businesses. And I said, well, I'd love to come. And they said, it would be great. Come on up. And so I go up there and there is a salesman at uh, IBM and he is still around today named Hammond Satterfield. Okay. Well, Hammond and I sit down and we talked about the Systems 3. Now, let me tell you, they didn't have a Systems 3 Model 10. They had a picture of one, okay, because... The machine had not been uh, located except maybe a dozen around the United States in their big education centers. Little Rock, I promise you, was not one of them. Memphis was. So I talked to Hammond about this computer and he said, well, why don't we get together and see what uh, one would cost? The computer uh, that Hammond configured was in the neighborhood of 140 to $150,000 and with change. And so uh, Hammond came and uh, we sat down and went through it and he showed me all the things that he had configured. That sounded right to me. And so we had a meeting with the board of directors, okay, and the board... The directors of this bank were all McCoys because it was a McCoy bank. It was a family bank and Hammond had never dealt with one before. So when Hammond got there that day, he said to me, hey Eddie, this is a waste of my time because this bank can't afford one of these. And I said, Hammond, do you know what a family bank is? He said, well, kind of. And I said, well, the McCoy family can do anything they want to do and they can spend the money they want to spend as long as it does not jeopardize the soundness of this bank. And the FDIC will decide that, but it won't. They've got the money to do what they want to. And so we go into the boardroom and I introduce Hammond to the board and uh, Eddie McCoy, who incidentally, now y'all got to understand, we got two Eddies going here. We got Eddie Sly and we got Eddie McCoy. So we had to separate the two some way. So Eddie McCoy stayed Eddie McCoy, but I gained a new name and my name now is Eddie Boy. And so Eddie, Eddie McCoy said to Eddie Boy, Eddie, are you recommending to this board that we purchase this computer? And I said to him, I am recommending that we purchase this computer. Well, Hammond uh, hadn't told anyone, but he had been told by uh, the IBM attorneys not to sell us this computer. D.E. McCoy was the senior on the board. And D.E. McCoy said, uh, okay, by show of hands, how many uh, of the board are voting to buy this computer? And when he put his hand up, five more McCoys put their hands up right behind him. So we got 100% unanimous decision to buy the computer. Well, Hammond was sitting there thinking, oh my gosh, what have I done? And so he said, but don't worry. In his mind, he was saying this. He's saying, they don't understand this whole thing. And he said to Mr. McCoy, he said, well, Mr. McCoy, there's something I hadn't told you. Uh, IBM requires that you pay for uh, this computer in full uh, at the time you sign the contract and before they will start building this machine for you. And he said, he knew in his mind, he said, this will stop this because they ain't going to do this one. And D.E. McCoy said to me, Eddie boy, uh, go down there. And then he stopped a second. He said, hey, son, who do I make this check out to? He said, well, it needs to be a cashier's check to make the IBM. And he said, go down there and tell Sue to make this young man a cashier's check for the amount of money this contract says and, and let me look at it and we'll sign it. And I said, great. So we got the contract, he signed it, he gave him the money and Hammond was swallowing hard when he left there, wondering how am I going to explain to the people that I wasn't supposed to sell this, that I've sold this and, and, and I don't know what I'm going to do. Well, Next day, Hammond came, uh, I got a phone call the next morning and it was Hammond. 
And he said, Eddie, I need to come talk to you. And I said, okay, come on. He said, I'm here. And I said, where? And he said, I'm at the drugstore next door. I borrowed their phone to call you. We didn't have cell phones back then, incidentally. And so I, I'm at the drugstore and I said, well, I'll come, let me come downstairs and get you. And I carried him up to my office and he said, uh, I need to tell you something. There, there, there's something we left out. There's no software for this computer to run a community bank. Yes, it got just that quiet in my office. And I said, wait a minute. What do you mean there's no software? He said, there's no software. I said, what does that mean? What is software? And he said, software is what you write to make this machine work. I said, now Hammond, yesterday you helped me talk this board into buying a machine for 140 something thousand dollars and uh, on the next day you're back here telling me that it doesn't work and you expect me to go in front of this board and to tell them, hey, I, I was just joking about buying this machine. It doesn't work, so we don't need to do this. Nah, not happening. Where do we go buy it? Because I'm ready to spend some money to do that. And he said, you don't understand. You can't buy it. There is no software for community banks for this computer. I said, Hammond, what is software? He said, it's what makes a machine work. And I said, boy, we've been here before. All right, tell me what, tell me what we need to do. And he said, well, uh, we're gonna, you're gonna have to write it. I said, what, how, how do you do that? And he said, well, tell you the truth, I've got some aptitude test forms that we can fill out here and you can give them to your employees and they can uh, take the aptitude test and we can find out if there's somebody in this bank that's capable of writing this software. I said, well, that's a big joke. You're looking at one of five of us that are in this bank. Uh, we, we, we don't have anybody to take that test. So you're looking at the guy that's gonna write it, but I don't even know what you're talking about. He said, well, Eddie, here's what we've decided. We have an SC in Little Rock named Walter Anderson. And Wally Anderson is our banking finance SC and we're gonna let him come to Sheridan, to Grant County Bank, and we're gonna let him uh, come half days, uh, twice a week, and he's gonna show you how to write software for this machine and then in between, we're gonna send you to IBM classes. And we got classes for our SEs, not for customers yet, but SEs. And it was so new in this thing until my books for the classes were Xerox copies. And you're gonna to get to go to those classes with our SEs and learn how to write software. And I said, where are the classes? And he said, well, they're in New York, they're in New Orleans, they're in uh, San Francisco, they're in, and I thought, holy smokes, uh, whatever, Hammond, whatever we have to do, it doesn't make any difference to me. We've got to do it, so let's get, let's get started. What happens is IBM will take that check and they will send that contract and check in and then they'll put a scheduler on it and schedule bill times for it. And if within maybe two weeks or three weeks, they will tell you how long and the chip date of that computer. Well, in this case, it, when Hammond came back to tell me this, it was gonna be 18 months uh, before we got this machine. So if you stop and think about this just a minute, they just gave me uh, the length of time I had to write the software. The machine was gonna be there in 18 months and we were ready, had to be ready for it. Here I am with a, if y'all want to talk about a mess in, on my hands, uh, a mess on my hands. I don't know how to write software. Uh, the computers are gonna be here in 18 months. I've talked the board into buying it, which wasn't any problem, uh, but Eddie McCoy is expecting that computer to work. And uh, Eddie Boy is expecting it to work too. 
uh, because I, if I'm going to write that software in 18 months, I found out I didn't have time to look for another job. And so I had to get after it. And so now then, uh, here we go. Uh, Wally Anderson's coming down to help me. And he, first thing you get in the mail, you start getting your manuals in the mail. Wally would come down and say, okay, uh, here's what this sheet does. And here's what this does. No big deal. I wasn't going to understand it anyway. But he did say to me, all right, Eddie, you got to decide what you're going to write. What applications are you going to write? And I said, okay. He said, which one do you want to write first? And I said, well, savings. He said, why are you doing savings? And I said, because I only got six transactions a day. Surely I can do that one. Wally would say to me, edits. Okay, what did I find out about edits? And he said, it's in the manuals. So I'd have to look it up. And then I'd go to school. Then I'd learn what an edit program was. And then I learned what a, uh, uh, another program was. So I began to get started. A uh, little funny story. When I bought calculators from Burroughs, and incidentally, Burroughs was in, had the banking business at that time, they came out with some of these new electronic calculators with stick lights on them that rolled around and around and looked like a slot machine. And I thought, hey, we got to have some of those. And so I bought a half dozen of them. And I don't know why, but I would always in a calculator put in 12 times 12 and to see if it equaled 144. If it didn't equal 144, I figured the calculator don't work. And so... I put in 12 times, so it equal 144. Yep, so I bought some calculators from Burroughs. But then I got to thinking, when I started writing this software, I, I couldn't get it to work. I couldn't get it to do what I wanted to do at all. And I thought one day I was in the Ed Center in Memphis trying not to write software, but to learn how to write software. And I said, if I could write a little program that would be 12 times 12 and I could make the printer print 144. It would make me feel so good. So I sat there and all of a sudden I wrote that program and I heard the printer print and I thought, look here, look here, look here. And I said, I, I see how it works. I see how I, I see how this works. And from that point on, I sat down there and I wrote software just like it was a letter home. And I was somewhere into general ledger, maybe CDs, and I realized my 18 months is not gonna work. I'm not gonna be able to write this stuff in 18 months and have it ready. So I've gotta get some help. So the bank allowed me to find an employee. And I had a good friend, classroom schoolmate, uh, named Larry Bennings. And Larry Bennings had be work, began to work for Simmons First National and they had taught him Cobalt. Well, now Cobalt and RPG-2, RPG-2 is what the uh, System 3 Model 10 language, uh, it liked the language there and it ran on that and Cobalt was what the bigger machines ran on. Well, Larry didn't know RPG-2, and I didn't know Cobalt, but he had the knowledge of the way a program flows and what it does. So I hired Larry as an uh, employee to help me write the rest of this software. He came in as operations officer of the bank, and then when he got his job done in the daytime, uh, by, by lunchtime he was through, we finished the, he finished the rest of the day and every day writing software, and I wrote software every day, all day long. And we're talking all day, every day, uh, Saturdays, Sundays, Thanksgiving. So we're writing software night and day and uh, we're writing it on coding sheet so it needs to be punched into cards. Now, Eddie McCoy was the CEO uh, of the bank and he was so dedicated and committed to this computer that even when I told him about there was no software, it didn't phase him a bit. Uh, so Eddie McCoy 
became our key punch operator. We wrote 167 programs during this length of time of various sizes. The last code we wrote was installment loans. Larry and I both wrote on that uh, programs, all those programs for installment loans. And the day, the Thursday that the machine got there, Larry and I were still writing the code for installment loans. Now that's how close it was, but we were right there at ready. They said that we've got a delivery uh, for Grant County Bank and we we're need directions and we're gonna make sure that someone's there to accept the delivery. Well, I didn't have to ask what it was. I knew what it was and I got so excited. I remember, I remember going out on the corner and kind of like take my chair out there and I'll just sit here and watch for the truck and wait till it gets there, okay? And so after, right after lunch, about 1.30, here it shows up in the parking lot and uh, they open the door and it, this stuff is up inside, wrapped up in towels and blankets and strapped down like you wouldn't believe. And y'all, let me tell you, pretty sight in my life was when they uncovered uh, that uh, CPU or that computer and it was, uh, I, you know, everybody says that you bleed IBM blue. Well, you actually, uh, I, I bled red. I ordered the computer in red. Unload the truck, put it in the lobby of the bank because we've got one of those banks that was designed by one of the architects that liked that canyon ceiling in banks at one time. It was really popular. So you got these big long stairs on each side of the lobby going upstairs and now we got this computer downstairs, weighs 1,850 pounds, and we got it downstairs and we'd have uh, no elevator. And so we decided, okay, well, how are we gonna get this thing up there? And we decided to go down to the hardware, I mean, the lumber company store, which is right down the, on the corner of the street by us, and buy some tuba 12s. And we bought those tuba 12s and came back and laid them down on the staircase and then we went down to the station right behind us and we got a U-Haul refrigerator dolly. And we see, we're thinking, we finally got to where we're thinking now. And we bring all of that stuff up there and we get us some ropes. We got it set up, we got it, we drug it up those stairs. The hardest part about dragging it upstairs was finding somebody to talk in, being at the bottom of the computer pushing it cause if the rope broke, they was, potted meat. Uh, so we got it upstairs. The IBM sent their CE, which is a uh, customer engineer over and named Bill Penny. And Bill Penny installed the computer. Install means he put it together and he put the table on it. He put the, everything and bolted it down and tested it and got it what they call cisgen and now he turned it over to me and said, it's ready to go. Now, the question is, how long did it take you to use it after you got it and get your software tested? Uh, well, we got the computer turned over to us on a Friday afternoon, about uh, seven o'clock at night. And we had already contacted Simmons and told him we'd be after our work so we tested it while we put the uh, conversion on it. Uh, we tested our software real time, they might say. And it was easier to do that back then. And I won't go into that, but you could run one program at a time easy enough back then and look at the output. The interesting thing about this story is that once we got that software, once we got converted, the first night that we had real, what I call real processing on it, which was within the first week. It actually took us longer to process the bank than if we'd have stayed on the old manual systems and sensitronics. We would have been through, they would have been through about five o'clock at the bank and we were still five o'clock the next morning, still trying to get through and so embarrassed because we, we did not expect that. But anyhow, it happened and we got we fixed that and we made things work and it got better and better every day. Larry and I were sitting there kind of 
talking to each other, uh, and and we were we let a little bit of the steam off of this time because things had working a little better, and we look up and here comes this old man in the door, and see, I can say that now because I am an old man, but he was older as I am, uh, as old anyway, and he came in the door and he got, we had some chairs at a table and he just got a chair and sat down. And I looked at Larry and said, Larry, do you know who that is? He said, I have no idea. And I said, I'm gonna go ask him. And I went over and I said, yeah, excuse me, can I help you? And he said, well, yeah, you can. He said, my name is TV Gamblin and I'm from Philadelphia, Mississippi. And I said, well, Mr. Gamlin, it's really nice to know you. And he said, IBM's got this salesman that keeps aggravating the fire out of me. And he said, I don't like salesmen at all, but he's been telling me about this computer you guys have got over here in this bank. And he said, I don't believe them a bit, so I wanted to come see it. So I drove over here today to come see that computer. He said, so there it is, I see it. Looks like it's working fine, and that's I needed to see that. And I said, well, you're welcome to stay with us. We'll process it and show you the whole thing. And he said, well, no, what I really want to know is uh, I want to buy one of these things, and I guess I get it from my IBM guy. And I said, I think that's the right way to do it. He said, but they tell me I got to have that software. You know, software has been plaguing me now for long, for 20 months. And here we are, he's got to have some software. And I said, lots of luck. And he said, how much you sell that to me for, that software? And I said, oh, crap. I don't know about that stuff. So I thought, okay, let me go call IBM and talk to Hammond Satterfield. And I called Hammond and said, Hammond, there's a man here who wants to buy this software. Can I sell it to him? And he said, well, sure, cheers. Do what you want to with it. And I said, okay, great. So I go out and I said, Mr. Gamlin, uh, we'd be glad to sell you the software for your computer. He said, how much? Oh, man. So now then I got to go back and call Hammond back. And I said, Hammond, how much we ought to get for it? And he said, I won't, we won't get into that because that pricing is up to you. Anything we say, too much, too little, uh, that's up to you. I don't care. So I went to see Eddie McCoy. And, and so now here's Eddie Boy and Eddie McCoy putting our minds together, of which we know nothing about what we're about to talk about. So it turned out to be Eddie McCoy said to Eddie Boy, uh, whatever you think's fair. So... I go back and I say to Mr. Gamlin, uh, Mr. Gamlin, will you give us $7,500 for this system? And he said, well, I absolutely will. Write you a check today. I said, okay, but uh, we don't need a check today. And he said, no, I'm prepared. I can do that, my bank. Okay. He said, now, all I'm going to get is a box, a case of cards, boxes of cards. I said, yes, sir. That's the program. He said, you see, we don't know what to do with those, so you're going to have to install them for us. Uh, okay. So I said, hang on. Hey, Larry, this man wants us to take these programs and install them in his computer in Philadelphia, Mississippi. What do you think? He said, God, this would be great. How much will he pay us? Now, here's a uh, dumbass number two, excuse me. Here's uh, the stupidity of number two. I went out and I said, Mr. Gamlin, uh, yes, sir, we'll install it for you. And, and we want $1,500. And he said, well, I know that's a pretty good amount of money, but y'all will pay your expenses, won't you? And I said, oh, yes, sir. Well, I mean, come on. Uh, but we did it and we carried the software to Mr. Gamlin's bank. We sat down with them and did a walkthrough and we, we talked to the sergeant of the bank who every bank's got one and we came up with a plan that they had to execute and then we'll come set the software in place. 
and that we did right, okay? We converted this bank and we were out of balance 10 cents, one thin dime. And with Coach A. Mitchell being my banking teacher, I found it. We were not gonna leave there without it. And so we balanced this bank to the penny. Community banks love to brag about nobody goes and sees your your work, our work. It stays in our bank. It does not go outside this bank. So uh, we're secure, we're safe, and we're private. Well, see, they couldn't do that before they had a machine that would they could put in there. So they were ready for a machine. IBM had a machine that worked and they could sell. And guess who had the software? Well, Grant County Bank had some, and nobody else had it. We were the only ones that had that software because we had written it m months and months before. Now, uh, IBM had a solution. Everybody bought it, uh, and uh, as 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 time went on, IBM we were IBM sales point uh, for community banks. Uh, all over the United States. We were not just Arkansas. We were not just joining states. All over the United States, we were known as, this is where you take your banker to see uh, System 3 Model 10 because this is where the software is. IBM uh, had a corporate jet, of course, and it was not a small corporate jet, it was a large corporate jet. Uh, and they were loading it down with people and we would have as many as five days in a row of IBM's airplane being at the airport at Little Rock. Well, they were coming to, believe it or not, Grant County Bank in Sheridan, Arkansas with a half a dozen bankers. And they they were as, as familiar with our boardroom as we were, because they would go in, set up the boardroom and, and have these bankers come in and they would give them a dog and pony show, as we called it, about the software. And then we would walk down the hall and the bankers would look at it. And then they would go back and honest to God, almost 100% bought uh, the product after they did that because they were not looking for a uh, comp competitive type uh, deal. They just wanted to see a, that computer and it work and they saw that, so now it's a go buy it. So it was a good deal for both. And, and, and as time went on, Larry and I were installing more and more and more of these systems uh, around the country. And uh, the bank, what the bank had decided to do is that they got the software. Larry and I got the install. And hear me, Mr. T.B. Gamlin, bless his old heart, uh, he got a bargain. We never did another one for $1,500. I can tell you that right now. And so we we got maybe close to that an hour before it was over with, but we, we had begun to make some money and we figured out how to do it. FDIC realized that here's this guy out there that's making, uh, putting in banks and we don't even know who he is and he's doing our FDIC insured banks and we, we ought to know more about that. And so w one day uh, I, I get this phone call, but prior to that, I've been out and talk, I, when I'm there, I talk to the community banks and tell them you have your own system three and this software, you can become independent and you can be your own bank and you don't have to listen to your, your service bureau or your correspondent bank. You can do what you want to do. You can build your cash letters the way you want them to be built. You can clear your checks the way you want them to be cleared. And you actually can compete with a large bank because you can do the same thing they can do. And so I, I really felt good about having been able to do that. I had not thought about what I had stirred up out there, but uh, there was a FDIC, the, actually the director of Arkansas at, the, at FDIC was Curtis Hutchins. And Curtis was here in Little Rock 
and a friend of mine, because you become friends with all these people. And he, one morning early, he showed up in the Grant County Bank. And I, that, now that was unusual uh, for him to even come to a bank, much less to show up early. And he was, came up to my office and I said, Curtis, golly, good to see you. And he said, well, I wanted to come talk to you a minute. He said, I just came back from Washington, D.C. yesterday. And I said, well, okay, what's that uh, got to do with me? And he said, a lot, all of it, everything. And I said, okay, well, tell me the story. And he said, well, I walked into the office of the FDIC in Washington, D.C., and they said, who in the world is this guy named Eddie Sly? And he said, well, he is a friend of mine and he is a banker in Sheridan, Arkansas, that's written software for uh, independent community bank system. And he said, uh, so what about Eddie Sly? They said, we need for you to go back and for you to go in his office, not call him on the phone and sit in front of him and look him in the eye and tell him that he needs to shut his mouth. I said, okay, what about? And he said, tell him that he is stirring up the community banks as people and making them believe in things that he says they can have and are going to get that they are never going to get. And I said, well, is that not interesting? And Curtis said, I've delivered the message. And I said, well, Curtis, I need to ask you a question do I work for the FDIC? And he said, nope, you don't. And I said, well, then you can tell them to kiss my ass. He said, well, tell you the truth, Eddie, I'm a little ahead of you. He said, I told him yesterday that he, you were gonna tell me to kiss his ass when I was there. It was like juggling banks, okay? I would leave on Thursday afternoon because I was, we always worked on all Friday, Friday night, Saturday, Saturday night, and Sunday, we tried to get our way back to the bank because we had to be back working for the bank on Monday morning. Well, I would come to Little Rock to Jim East Bank, and I don't remember her last name, but the SE I worked with on Jim East Bank was named Paula. And she would meet me and we would set up some things that we were needed done and Paula would actually do those and I would leave that bank and drive, uh, it's five hours. Uh, if you drive reasonable, it's four and a half. If you drive like I drove, uh, incidentally, uh, I had a 1969 blue Corvette uh, that I drove and I could seem like I could get there a little faster than they did. And so I would go from there to Brittany Coons First National Bank in Natchez and I would get them working on some things that needed doing. And then I would leave there in the night and I would meet Jim May at uh, Gonzales, Louisiana, whatever time it was, it didn't matter. I had to get there and do it and I would get him started on some stuff. Then I would head back to Natchez and see how they were doing with their stuff and then move on back to Little Rock and see how that worked and then I can be home for Monday morning to go to work. Now, surely you figured out by now, there wasn't any going, I didn't have a hotel room. There wasn't any going to bed. I was going from one bank to the next bank to the next bank and so was Larry. But we both had this passion uh, about uh, installing software and we forgot that our families needed somebody to be home. And we also had this stupid idea that we were the salvation of the community banks. And, and tell you the truth, a lot to that, when you stop looking at the software, uh, we put, we put uh, Grant County Bank in Sheridan, Arkansas on the map because they produced this software. And so Larry and I, Larry was first, sold uh, his software. Uh, Eddie McCoy had agreed with us that 
if, if we left there, we could have a copy of the software. I, I don't know why he did that, and I don't think that he intended to do that, but bless his heart, he, he did. Well, Larry sold his copy, a copy of his software, uh, at that time to Seattle First National Bank in Seattle, Washington. Seattle First National then had to be had to had foreclosure taken on it and they went broke and Bank of America was the receiving bank of Seattle First National and all of a sudden Bank of America had Grant County Bank software and Seattle First National had it. And then uh, I sold it to uh, uh, Systematics in Little Rock later in life, but prior to that, I sold it to uh, Jack Henry, of course bought it. I sold it to a guy named Shelly Shank, which he was kind of like uh, Jack Henry, except not near as big out on the East Coast. Ross Perot wanted to get into community banking and he I sat down, visited with him, and he bought the software from me uh, and put it into a company called Peerless. Really interesting guy when I sat down there, and he had a total appreciation of my cowboy boots and my blue jeans. Uh, no explanation needed, okay? Uh, and so I was I was a hot, hot shot, uh, cocky little programmer, designers, installer, answer all your questions about banking and banking software. You can't give me one I can't take care of. I, I can't, there's no way that I can remember how many banks or say how many banks we install. But Larry and I never got back together as a partnership after a while. Larry went on his way. He sold his software to a company called Systems. Uh, they sold it and made it uh, into a company called Horizon. Uh, all of that software is Grant County Bank software. But we loved our jobs. Uh, I will tell you that I am one of those people that can swear that I got up in the mornings when I was, when I got up and I was anxious to go to work and I did not want to go home. Uh, I, 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 was, I was that intrigued and I liked it that much. And for you young people, the only advice I have to you is find you something you like and do that job because you cannot do a good job working for something you don't like. Uh, it, it'll show.